Riot Podcast time. Yes, it is. Woo. Woo woo. Woo woo. Woo. Bub Rub and Little Sis invite you. <laughs> invite you to join us for game night tomorrow night. That's a classic right there. We classic. do have our game night. Uh, we are doing a special riot show. So normally if you're a podcast listener, you would like to watch us host something special. That is tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. So Thursday, May 24th, in case you're listening to this at another time. Mm-hmm. That'll be on our Facebook pages. If you follow us at Radio U Riot or Radio U, you will see us do a show then you we're will. doing a game Look, night it's going to be so exciting everybody's going to want to get involved hudson will introduce you to him if you haven't met him if you have not met him before well, and we're playing ticket know, to ride as podcast listeners hudson showed up uh, when nikki took a week off yeah and then didn't i take a day off and he did a show yes with you? he did okay so yes, you guys he should did. be at least a little familiar with hudson um and if you are unfortunately familiar with Hudson. I'm sure you're going to learn to love him. You're going to love it. So, hey, uh, in the podcast today, we talk about running out of internet, Instagram vacation tours, Netflix, and Michael Bay. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together. And money. Money. <laughs> lots and lots of money. Um, a spy pen to listen to Nikki's secret meetings. <laughs> Uh, uh, maybe my favorite story of the whole morning. Like, we only talked about it for a little while, but... This 30-year-old guy that got evicted from his parents' house, he, the pictures of him in court, he is so hilariously smug that it's like, bro, and he gets evicted. Yeah. But I, there's something about it where you're just like, oh, this guy. Even out off this air while we guy. were doing the show this morning, every so often to be like, you know, that guy looks ter- like he just looks so bad, meaning he's he just must have been so difficult to work with. And that's your parents. That's your, your family. Your parents uh. have paid the money to take you to court to get you kicked out of the house because you just won't leave and it has to be bad to get to that point so yikes you'll we'll talk about it more yikes all right well it's all in the podcast you guys enjoy it nikki and i are i don't know whether i need more coffee or a nap one or the other well one you can do here more Uh, coffee it is you know what I can do both. You can do both. <laughs> Just to be clear. All right. All right. Well, you guys enjoy the podcast. Have a good day. Bye. The worst of the riot box set is now available nowhere because we know you wouldn't want it anyway. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. I got to tell you, one of the toughest things that can happen to you in the modern era is to run out of internet. You know, where you've just checked everything that you want to check. All your favorite sites. And basically all you you have left is the endless scroll. Whether it's Twitter or Facebook, you're just like, keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. If you're like, you've never gotten to that point. In this job, you do quite frequently. It's real. (laughs) And the thing is, is that I haven't been sleeping really well. So I was in really early this morning. And I'm already at the end. But we've, I mean, there's so I much know. show left. I know. <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, the thing is, I have plenty of, like, we have show. Yeah. There's show. We have but show. There's show. We have show. We got, you guys just, are covered. When you personally are just looking at things, you know, you're like done. In our downtime. <laughs> our time. During some of the songs. <laughs> yeah. Show. There's there's no Aww, show. There's well. plenty of sh- no. There's plenty of show. There's just nothing left for for Mo. Yeah. For me. Well, I'm sorry Mwah. to hear that already. How can that be? Like right now, here I am. I'm on Blu-ray.com. <laughs> I'm scrolling through what's on sale right now. When in doubt, with no intention to buy. When in doubt, if we get down to the very bottom, you'll see us looking at Blu-ray upcoming releases mm-hmm. for no reason. Well, we normally do the digital bits, but I was looking at a review on Blu-ray. And I was like, oh, look, they have these charts. And so charts. That sounds fun. Oh, my gosh. That is like General So's chicken with lame sauce. Just put it on there. Mm. Still good. Still good. But, but lame. pretty lame. <laughs> Worst of the riot, not enough. Not enough. Check the blog and all things riot at riot.radiou.com. Harvard Medical School, Nikki. Yes. The doctors of tomorrow today. (laughs) Yes. They are right now concerned about you and your lifestyle. And what's the problem this time? Well, here's what they did. They took, let's see, nine individuals, three women, six men, and they found some very consistent results. For an entire week, 
They had them going to bed with their iPads, laptops, <laughs> phones, and tablets. I had a feeling it was going to be somewhere associated with a phone and some sort of screen. Their, the average age was 25. Yeah. Uh, they had five consecutive evenings of unrestricted use of light-emitting tablet computers. And then they had that followed by five nights of reading from printed materials, such as books sure. or newspapers. And so it looks like when they had their tablets, volunteers went to bed at least a half an hour later than they would without their tablets. They also did blood tests that showed their melatonin levels were lower and that they began to produce melatonin later in the evening. It also took them longer to fall asleep if they were using their tablets in bed. Because what they say is, yes, you're staying up watching stuff, but say you turn it off finally, the screen, the brightness of it has been affecting you in a way that you maybe don't realize, and it's keeping you from either falling asleep, even if you turn your tablet or phone off, or going into a deep enough sleep faster than if you didn't have the bright light shining at you. Come on. (laughs) <laughs> sounds like sounds like you and Harvard Medical School. Like we're you're right on the same page. That I you're right on the same page. We're on the same page. I just don't care. I think that's what the page we're all at. Well, then no we need cares. another study about how to help you care. <laughs> I just don't care yet. One day I'm going to get tired enough and I'll turn it off. <laughs> No, but you aren't you listening? You won't. Early if you keep, sta- yes, if you keep staring at it, you're not going to get tired. No, down the road, up... I'll be so tired already that I'll just fall asleep like a baby at nap time. You're going to be like that Devil Wears Prada song, wandering around going, I'm not tired. <laughs> not tired. I'm not tired. <laughs> to the key of Evergreen. <laughs> Perfect. I'm not tired. Yeah, that'll be everybody. It's fine. I may have been doing that this morning on my way in. No, doesn't I, matter. I understand what this study is saying. Okay. It's another one. This is just one more <laughs> that I'm bringing to you, Nikki. One more study. <laughs> Laying it out. Hey, last night I turned my phone off at 10, and normally it's later. And I went to bed by 1030. That is a lot earlier than normal. It's great. Thank you. I Harvard. last night stayed... In my, I didn't go to Harvard. <laughs> no, I just want Harvard to hear that. Okay. They heard it. I Last night, I I have been trying to make myself turn my tablet off and grab my Kindle, which is A not, lower light thing, yeah. yeah. It, it's not the same. And uh, last night, I was like, no, I'm not. I'm watching the thing. I stayed up so much later than I should have. Did you? It really was my tablet's fault. Now, it was really my fault. <laughs> but... but- you know, tablet. <laughs> Let's not blame you. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not. better to blame the object. Yeah. So, Nikki, what you and I need to do is every night at eight o'clock, we need to put our screen devices no, in a locked, a uh, timed locked box. It's <laughs> not so fair. So that we can get the sleep we need. I think if I just put it down by like nine thirty, nine forty-five, I'm going to shoot for that. <laughs> like it's your dad coming in. That I, that's, that's not what's fair. The heart of it. That's not fair, Dad. <laughs> I don't want to go to bed yet. Dad, Mom, Mom, can I have <laughs> Give it? Give me my tablet back. But I did my own. Homework. I've been good. It's just because we get up so early for this show. <laughs> I feel bad when I can't go and stay up late. I want to have fun. Can I live? <laughs> Imagine a world where the riot never talks and it's glorious Radio U music for hours on end. Now, imagine the opposite of that. You're already there. It's the worst of the riot. On Radio U. Nikki, when you're planning your summer vacation, yes. how important to you is it that the location be Insta worthy? Insta worthy? Um, no, but you know, you tend to at least for us, our summer vacations usually wrap around family. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, family's in some fun places that are insta worthy. So it's fine. Yeah. So uh there's a US based travel company called Contiki. And they have started targeting travel package to, they say, people who are between the ages of 18 and 35. And they say millennials really care. That's what a millennial is, 18 to 35. They really care, especially if they're single, sure. about just how good the photos are that they can get. Well, you want to go to a lovely place, so it might as well photograph well. <laughs> so they have started what they call the Snap Canada Tour, in which, and I quote, they promise travelers... 
endless Insta opportunities. If you follow this tour. Mm -hmm. So they're literally, the goal of this is they are taking you places where you can take great pictures. That's what the Snap Canada tour is for. Uh, And let's see, them and there's another one called El Camino Travel that has started their Shoot My Travel thing where yeah. that's their tour like they line you up with these different places they call you an ego traveler you're somebody that <laughs> your travel is there to boost your online ego well you're just wanting likes while you're there yeah so i, <laughs> I can see that i mean a lot of people choose uh if you're going on vacation you're choosing a destination and then from there you take a look and see what the city has to offer and uh the problem with going on a tour is i mean you're paying them to tell you something that you could easily find out, I think. Yeah, probably. We but could. then again, what if they really do have, like, okay, if you stand here yeah, and but then I, everybody who goes on that tour has the same photos. Yeah, but the idea or the chance that your family or friends, the ones that maybe you want to impress, unless you're trying to be like an Instagram star. Then you're which using is the hashtags and everybody's going to see it. <laughs> yeah, uh, the chances of the overlap, I would think, would be kind of low. If you got in on it, on this tour in the beginning, I mean, we're talking five years later, then maybe I'm not interested. I love the idea that Nikki calls them and they're like, I'm so... I'm so over your tour. I, need I haven't a, even been on it, and I'm over it. I need a tour of the places that aren't on <laughs> tours like this. Like, yours is like a mainstream Insta tour. I need, you know, like the behind-the-scenes Insta tour, uh, the yeah. ones that not everybody knows about. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's exactly and what I you're saying. And I would think other millennials would, too. So I need, like, a travel service. You've probably never heard of it. That I does. need an ironic travel service. Yeah. Well, you could take the Insta tour ironically. I could do that, Like, I here's guess. an ironic photo of me getting my picture taken where everyone else does that seems so much work (laughs) so much work i don't know nikki i sometimes you got to go a long way for irony you got to do it for the insta you got to do it (laughs) most instagram cities last year london at three moscow at two new york at one outside of new york haven't been to the other one so maybe in the future (laughs) haven't been to moscow or london paris only came in at five la at six barcelona you're planning that spain trip barcelona absolutely that ended up at 10 but your top five locations number five tokyo disney no we need to go there i know i really want to do that now we would totally do an insta worthy tour of tokyo absolutely we would do that Uh, number four the eiffel tower three central park Hey, we've done that. We've done that. We've Two done that. Times Square. We've done that. And one Disneyland. We've done that. You have. I haven't been. Well, there. yeah. So we're we're pretty good on this list. I've been to Disney's Magic Kingdom. That's number six. <sighs> All the way down at Please. six. Lame. I'm the worst. <laughs> you Nikki's need, the best. Seems, Nikki's in first place. I'm in sixth place. Seems like someone in this room needs to start booking a trip. Let's get to Anaheim right away. <laughs> The Riot. They hate me. They hate you. They hate us. Why else would they make us listen to the worst of the riot? Radio U. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, uh, but there is a company that for a monthly fee, they will actually allow you to watch movies in your home (laughs) an unlimited amount. So you go to their website or through one of these small set-top boxes and you're able to select different films. They call it kind of an on-demand Man. service because you're demanding <laughs> it. And it's fascinating. It's called Netflix. <laughs> now, Flix, Nikki, is what the kids ah, call movies, the movies these days. Oh, I okay? see. So, like, the old timers, they're like, you know, is it Internet Films? And they're like, no, it's Net, you know, short for Internet. And then Flix, <laughs> which is the popular vernacular for movies. You know, I feel like a lot of talkies, people. the talkies, as we call them in my generation. A lot of people know about this service. You've heard of this? I think so. Netflix? <laughs> It's incredible. I've never even heard of something yeah, like that. Wink, wink. <laughs> okay, so Netflix did announce something yesterday that made me maybe not so much wink, but definitely raised an eyebrow. You see, the money that we're giving them, they're just like, <laughs> just make it a rain. Bye, make it rain. Bye, bye. How about this one? Yesterday they announced they're doing a Michael Bay movie. Michael Bay? Michael Bay, best known probably for his Transformers films of late. Sure, I remember. He's done a hundred of them. I don't know. Normally, he's what you call a blockbuster sort of guy who makes big movies, lots of explosion, less focus on the script. Okay, so there's him. Then let's talk about the star of Deadpool, uh, Mr. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. 
he's going to star in, the in Michael a Michael Bay, Bay, movie? Bay movie for Netflix that is allegedly costing about a hundred and fifty million dollars. They start production next year. Oh, I guess they're starting this year with a release date expected in 2019. So basically, that'll be 2019's. Uh, what was the Will Smith one? Bright at Christmas yeah. time. Remember that? Yeah, but this they put will a be a lot like, of money in that one. This will be their summer blockbuster movie for Netflix. Yeah, this is that, where and our that's, money. That's digital movies in your home. Yes, yeah, stop it. This uh, is where our money is going, isn't it? One hundred and fifty million. Our price is going on, up. On, but and that's <laughs> like what? one thing. At I least know. if it was one hundred and fifty million, and they were like, "Yeah, it's ten episodes." It, I mean, at least that's something. I just don't understand. Based off all the business classes and every money management class we've ever taken. You know, normally it's like, well, if you don't have the money in, you don't spend it. I just need to know, like, how are they spending that much money across the board compared to what what are they making from us, the the monthly subscriber? Or do they have investors, which I'm sure they do. And sometimes they deal off a studio or something. It's just not in theaters. It's probably something like the, there's a That's thing. It's a lot of money. It's a ton of money. It's a lot of money. How will that bring them back money? <laughs> Besides I don't, I don't brand know. loyalty and customer happiness. I don't know. I did see a survey yesterday that was basically like Netflix and Hulu customers love, love, love Netflix and Hulu. Cable customers hate, 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 hate. cable. <laughs> Even though really it's all the same thing. But True, but one one at least is, or two of them are slapping their names on new stuff. <laughs> so the customers are uh, apparently still happy to fork out the cash for it, but this will be Netflix's biggest financial deal to date at $150 million. So Bright, 2019. Bright cost them about $90 million, and Bright would have been in theaters. It, they made that movie and then Netflix bought it. So it wasn't like Netflix was Started at the beginning. Scratch. At least I don't believe so. And that's the case with this movie. You know, it doesn't exist yet, but they've already bought it. So Michael Bay and Ryan Reynolds will be doing a movie for Netflix next year. And the guys that wrote Deadpool will be writing this movie. They will write and executive produce it. So, And that's going to... And this is not, I hate. It'll be a live tub. It's only on Netflix. (laughs) Only on Netflix. Wait, it'll be a what? A live tub, like Deadpool, but it's alive (laughs) in a tub. (laughs) It's like, oh, it's not the same movie. It's not at all. It was the tub part that I couldn't figure (laughs) out. But it's a container for water. Yes, there it is. There it is. I just learned the use of flicks. So this tub word is (laughs) still. It's a new word, isn't it? Very new to me. (laughs) The part that keeps me up at night, we paid them for this. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Do you ever find yourself wanting attention? You just feel like you wish more and more people would take notice of you and what's going on in your life. You know, I have heard people say the way to get friends is to be a friend. Yeah. Reach out to people. You know, care for others the way you wish they were caring for you. And there's some fulfillment there. That's a great way for you to build friendships. There is, however, another way to get the attention that you're looking for. And that is to make up a crime. Um, because then you're going get to get, get a ton of attention. But you won't get friends from that or lasting attention. Well, sometimes you just need a quick shot of it. You know, you don't, I still feel like this is the wrong approach. If you say so. I just want to put that out there. You know, Nikki, if you're going to judge people like that, you're going to have judging. a hard time making friends. I'm just saying this is the wrong way to go about this. Because that is for real pretty harsh. What this person do? Well, it's like wrong. <laughs> I don't I don't even know why you're saying that. You're right. I feel threatened right now. <laughs> so a woman in Johnstown, Ohio, uh, she said she was at the... Kroger there. That's a grocery store. Yeah. She was in the bathroom. She said she was attacked by someone with a knife. And so, of course, they called the police and, you know, they filed a report. Then they started digging into the surveillance video and they found a woman leaving the bathroom about the time that, you know, this lady was in the bathroom. And so they released this woman's photo on social media and all this stuff. And so they're trying to find this woman and they that think- attacked her in the bathroom. Yeah. And then this lady finally came out and said, all right. I made the whole thing up. <gasps> Come on. That lady that you're all hunting for. She was just some lady in the bathroom. Just a I don't random know. She, person. She didn't do anything okay. Yeah, you're messing with someone's life. Will you be my friend? You're messing with someone's life then. She didn't. The friend part I made up. Yeah. But the rest of it was totally real about being fake. We see a lot of stories about people that make stuff up, attacks, and it makes it hard for then someone who's legitimately in a situation where you are trying to find someone. Like, the police can't doubt anybody. They should go in it. 
They should. Taking it seriously. But it's hard when some people do lie about it. And this lady did. Get a load of this. The lady in the photos saw herself in the photos and was like, what the what? Like, Why do you need me? She contacted police and was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't do anything. Yeah. This not is that, serious. Not that you blame her for feeling that way, I just way, don't right? get how someone would under or actually go into this situation lying and thinking that they would not eventually down the road be found out. Well, you would. Okay. Here's the part I don't get. And I don't see this Cameras in the story anyway. I, well, not in the bathroom, though. Well, outside like, to be able to see who's going in, of course, there's going to be a camera there. I get that. But I mean, like, if you were going to lie about something that happened, the bathroom would be a great place to do that because that is the one place where we're not putting cameras. I'm, we're not supposed to be we're putting cameras. Putting cameras. Uh, but yeah. So the, the other thing that I don't get. OK, I guess she actually didn't claim that she stabbed her or anything like the lady pulled a knife on her. First, I thought she had cut her, but no, there was no actual she was lying about yeah. there being a knife. All of it. So I want to know the process. I, I know she's never going to give this interview, but that's the thing I want to know. I want to know if she was at home and she was like, today's, today's the, day. the day. Yeah. Today's the day. Or was she just in the Kroger bathroom and she was like, you know what? I am sick and tired of these high prices. I've been robbed. I'm calling the police. I don't know, and I don't know why. Like, we're joking, oh, because she wants to get attention, but who knows the reason behind it? I don't know the reason. I want to know. I want to know that, and I want to know why that lady was so mad at the Mongolian barbecue place. So my list is getting longer, guys. Was that yesterday? It was was yesterday. yesterday. My list is getting longer. If you're not around yesterday during that story, I would Should've. suggest pulling up the Worst of Riot podcast and finding that one. You'll find out the other thing we really want to know. The Riot is an award-winning morning show. It's literally a medal for sucking. Now that is a medal for trying. Okay. Radio U. Uh, you know, they were talking about uh, no cameras in the bathroom. I heard the Riot say that a little bit ago, but... <laughs> Uh, right here, Nikki, I've got a way that you and I could carry a camera into the bathroom. Right right away? Yeah. I get... don't want to, but let's hear. <laughs> this is, okay. Have you ever wanted like a spy tech, like James Bond kind of stuff? Or like not Mission so Impossible? Much, but where... Are you talking like the, the glasses that have the camera in it? And not you... the old Snapchat ones? No, like, the, yes, basically that. But this is a pen. It's a pen that, or it looks like a pen. It writes like a pen. But it's got a 1080p video camera in it. 1080? With, with a 16 gig, like, recording capacity. So I could go, like, for example. That's that's pretty good, actually. Normally, I they're know. like, well, it's a lower quality. Well, the thing that I've been thinking is, like, I know that, like, sometimes you and Michael have meetings where you close the door and you're talking about me. So, <laughs> okay. In there. So think about this. Uh, I take that pen yeah. and I put it in the little cup in your office. And then I just nonchalantly, after you guys have had your little closed door chit chats. Go back in and get yeah, it. Get the video and I find out all the things that you said well, about me. at that me. point, then you don't need a video for it. You could just do audio. I know, but uh, then I'll, oh, it just depends on how I angle the camera. See, you want to see the face? Do I want to see <laughs> Michael's face you or in your the face? Yeah, exactly. Which one is it going to be? <laughs> Well, that's an interesting use for it. I was thinking more like if just, you know, you're with your friends. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Just something nice. Can you imagine coming in one morning and I'm like, hey, everybody, I've got something I want to play for you. Nikki. You slam the pin down. <laughs> Nikki. What is this? Remember the conversation you had with Michael yesterday? Do you remember? <laughs> and I'll be like, no, what do you mean? Like, I'll remember for you. Let me help you mm. with a little recall here. So. Michael, I just can't stand him anymore. How much is this pen if we were to invest in this technology? It's only $25. Oh, now, see, when you tell me $25, I think it's a piece of junk. <laughs> well, we don't, we only need like a 1080p, Nikki. That's high definition. You only need it to be so good. It's high definition. All right, well, I'll keep an eye out on my pen and pencil cup and just to make sure there's nothing new in there. And you're like, well, this is a new pen. I don't, I don't recognize it. What is this pen? That, what is this little hole? What if you try to do that with a, a friend or a coworker and they were a pen chewer and then they start chewing on your pen? Like, they pick it up and it's the camera in your mouth. Just recorded three hours of the inside of your mouth. <laughs> I can still hear what you were saying, but I don't get any actual good video. What about this? You take this pen in for like your uh, job interview yeah. and you're writing, taking notes, but the whole time you're recording. It always could be good if you are in a situation where you want to make sure you're covered in case there's a problem. <laughs> Someone's going to lie about you. Or you have a coworker lying about you. All right. That's not happening. What? 
What's it not happening? It's nothing. We're not getting the pin, even you, at $25. Anybody else feel like she sounds a little guilty here? $25 could clear this up. I can find out exactly what's going on. So next time I'm meeting with Michael, Bank, Michael, don't. Wait, stop. Let me check the room for pins. I got to sweep the room really quick. <laughs> Starting your day with the worst of the riot is a great idea because it's guaranteed to get better from here. It's the riot on Radio U. Hey, Nikki, do you have $200 I could borrow? Actually, uh, not you know on what? me, but you want me to cash you it? Could I just have it? Like, not borrow. Like, could I just have $200? If OB asked me honestly, then yes. But I feel like you are not being honest. Oh. You're teasing so with it. Now you're, I'm lying. <laughs> so, this, see, this is the kind of stuff I want to hear about in these meetings I don't go to. <laughs> That's why I need that camera. Michael is asking me for money. (laughs) Is it appropriate (laughs) for coworkers to just be constantly asking each other for money? Take, take, take. Take, take, take all the time. No. Okay. You know, they've got the Xbox Elite controller. I think that retails for about 150 bucks. So that's not Uh, the one you have? It is the one I have, uh, but I, uh, it was given to me. That's, uh, it was a gift and I love it. Uh, I don't, I don't know. It was an know, elite gift. I don't know if it's worth $150. Sure. I have no idea because I, I can't tell, but I can tell you this. It's great. I mean, I love that thing. And it so makes, why do you need more money? Do you want another one? Or? Well, because Nikki, these people called, wait a minute, where'd their name go? Are they Scuff? Yeah, that's the name of the company, Scuff. They're releasing the Vantage controller and it's basically an elite controller for the PlayStation 4. Oh, so you need all oh, you should have one for that system then. Because, Nikki, if I'm already used to being elite, it is always a step down Can't when I pick back. up a PlayStation 4 controller and I'm like, man. You this need is, to be an elite on that side. This is so unelite right now. Like, I'm so on the lower level when I'm used to. Sure. I mean, it's like being used to driving an Audi and all you've got's a Honda. <laughs> I mean, what are we doing? So you want My the... My Maserati's in the shop. You want the PlayStation Elite. That's it? That's what I'm looking for, The Nikki. Elite controller? Yeah, and uh, they say it's going to be out. Now, can, we can pre-order today. So go ahead and give me the money, and I'll just put it into that. <laughs> now, I was thinking if you needed money for something that maybe was more of a um, utility or a oh, rent. I'm gonna, a utility is something no, no. you use. No, well. And so, yes, this <laughs> more, is a utility. More like um, one brought to you by your, your local area uh, for electricity or something. But I don't know if a controller falls in the I need $200 category. Can I have it? How, how about this? Okay. It's for the show. It's for the show? Well, then you do it. And then it'll be tax, tax write-off. Oh, I will do it. I just need the money for it. <laughs> We're back to that again. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm totally willing to spend the money after you give it to me. Okay. No big deal. Uh, so, it'll cost $170 for a wired one. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I can't At be. At that point, I can't why be tied are you? Down. Yeah. I can't be tied down. $200 for a wireless one. That's a lot of money for it's a controller. so much. Like, you're treading and getting close to part of a console price. Well, I think you can buy, if you're really savvy and you get a deal you can find playstation 2 or playstation 4s for about 250 dollars like you're almost there 50 and this is just a controller it's one of them it's like what does this thing do what Uh, on this earth all right well we'll talk about it later but you know nikki we'll see you know you never do you you guys never get anything for yourself I said that to myself so many times. Don't try to pull that card. You never get anything for you. You know, you deserve it sometimes. Something nice. You're important. Something nice. Not the pack-in. It comes with a controller. Come on. Aren't you worth a little more than that? Because we think you are. (laughs) That's how you end up in debt. It's conversations just like that (laughs) that put you in debt. That's how you end up with a $200 Elite controller. And two of them. Paying for it for three years. (laughs) (laughs) Because so you do went that. with that payment plan because you're like, yeah, I'll pay it off eventually. Well, I mean, it's same as cash. <laughs> Wish the worst of the riot would never end. Everything that has a beginning has an end. What is wrong with you? Get our daily podcast through iTunes, Google Play, or the Radio U app. Now, Nikki, you're no doubt aware that over the last couple of years, my relationship with Best Buy has gotten better. 
Yes, it has because you joined the Gamers Club. Gamers Club Unlocked. Outside so of that, you never really went into a what we call a brick and mortar store. Yep. Uh, you would just normally buy online. And so their deal was, uh, I think it was like thirty dollars a year for two years, and then you got twenty percent off new releases. And if you did game trade ins, you got an extra ten percent. Yeah. Plus, it's part of their rewards program where you get points, and every so often you get points, you get five dollars back. You would get $10 off or a $10 back thing on a lot of pre-orders. Like they had a lot of kind of stuff layered into that. And it was, if I'm wrong, it kind of felt like from me looking at you, it seemed like how it used to be a bit more with GameStop. And then that just didn't work out as well. So you tried this gamer club. They were, it, it was just such a better deal. Like for me personally, such was a, better a better deal. Buy? It was a, was it the best buy? It was the best no. buy. Well, now I saw your tweet over the weekend. Couple, is it no law? Is was it so good you can't do it? A couple days ago, Best <laughs> Buy was like, "Yeah, we're not doing that anymore." Dude, how they just pull it out there like that? So here's the deal: you're basically once your subscription to it is up, it's over. So they're, like, they're not, not doing that anymore. Any new members, but if you're currently a Gamer Club member until your two years runs out, you're good. But then it's done. Mine ends October 26th of this year. Oh. I felt you did more gaming because of it. I certainly, I have bought more games because I had a great system in place where I would buy a game and, you know, they do, you know, it'd be $47 new. Then some games, a pre-order, you get $10 off of that. So you're down to about 37 bucks. Then you play it for a week or two. I would take it back. And with the extra 10%, I would end up getting somewhere between 30 and $33 back in trade. So essentially, I would be out 5 or $6 for the couple of weeks that I had played the game. I so, think I mean, Best Buy decided that was no longer not, that wasn't enough money to be making. I guess enough people were doing what I was doing because the thing they started to do was, you couldn't trade a game in if it, quote unquote, wasn't in the system. So more and more often, Best Buy would just not accept your game and trade. They had games where they were just like, nope, not accepting that. Not in nope, the system. Not accepting that. And so it started to be less of a good deal. And now they're just like, we're shutting you all out. <laughs> no deal anymore. All of you are uh, out. I want everybody to know this and remember this. Anytime you sign up for something, you're like, this is the best deal. This is amazing. Write it down, mark it down somewhere, and then when it decides that that company can no longer keep it, which it'll be coming. It's coming. You'll realize, oh, that didn't take long. <laughs> you know, what you love will just be done. Especially if something's a really good deal and it really starts to take off, then you're really screwed. Because <laughs> movie yes. pass, I know. I know what you're saying. I mean, that's just how it is. If it's too good to be true, they're not going to be able to sustain it. Yeah. It's a bummer, right? But I thought the thing was like there was a buy-in. I paid $30 to be a part of Gamers Club Unlocked. Still wasn't enough for them. Well, good for you. I don't know Best what they buy. were expecting. Good for you. <laughs> now you're going back to not going to the store. It, it will. Like it will turn into a thing where I'll be hunting online for a better deal, like New Egg or GOG or something like that, where I know I can get a better deal because Best Buy will no longer be. The best buy. Uh-oh. And eventually, mm. then, maybe you just won't even buy the game. Well, I'm going to steal it now? <laughs> that just meant you won't play it. Well, I have to have it. <laughs> it's the worst of the riot, because calling it the best of the riot would be a lie. Radio U. Here's the thing. Your parents want you to move out. Like, they haven't told you, and you're like, but I'm only 16. <laughs> but the they signs want, are there. They want you to move out. <laughs> right now... You're costing your parents a ton of money. Maybe if if you're if you're still there the first time, not so much. But if you've come back again. Oh, I'm not convinced. Then I, I think, where do you think the tipping point is? 13, 14, when your parents start having those discussions? The signs? Where it they're depends like, on your parents. You know, you know, when they're out, we could turn that room into a billiard parlor. <laughs> Uh, what about a place for? I think it depends on your situation. And I think for some parents, they like when you come back. You know, yeah. like you've been gone for a couple of years, no pressure of whatever you chose to do. Yeah. Not like, necessarily hey, just, college. Just to enjoy being here. Yeah, and then they missed you, and then they enjoy if you come back. Okay. But uh, for this guy, <laughs> this guy, there's lots of layers to this story. Here we go. I don't think I like this guy. Christina and Mark <laughs> Rotondo have been trying to get their son to move out. He's 30. He's 30. They've given him five written notices when he failed to pay rent or contribute to household expenses, but he refused 
to move. Um, he said that his parents didn't give him enough time to move out despite their multiple notices. It, and uh, they even offered to give him money. Like, here's money. Use to this get to, get, to get a place. Sure. He's like, no, no, no. Forget it. He's unemployed. Oh, man. No. Did you read the details on that? I didn't. He used to work at Best Buy. Well, it says he's in some kind of legal battle with he Best Buy. He couldn't work on Saturdays, and they said he needed to work on a Saturday. And I think this is simplifying it, but basically he took them up on a lawsuit. And then he says he's too busy to kind of work anywhere else because of this lawsuit going on. <laughs> I love it. It's so great. So I don't know if you got Because I'm going to sue Best Buy over the Gamers Club thing. I don't know how, but I'm going to, which means I can't come to work either. You're too I'm busy way to work. too busy. You are. So oh, yeah. he, I don't think he has any other job or anything, and, and that's what he's doing. He's staying at home. Well, Nikki, his job is the lawsuit. It's very consuming. And then there's something else where he has a he has a child or something. Sure, he does. Whatever. He has. I don't know if he has a family or... Here's a question. That like, didn't work out? When his son becomes... 30 and what needs to move in with him but he's still living with his parents does he need his parents to die off so we can take the house or what because like his parents have made it he obviously is having a little hard time getting started so when the next generation needs to lean on him what's what are they gonna do i don't know man the house of cards is falling apart i just feel bad because i mean i feel bad for the parents Hey. Again, when you watch this guy in some interviews and you read mm-hmm. some of his stuff in articles, I don't think we'd get along. I don't understand why someone would stay when they're being asked to go. Uh, that, I cannot right there, understand that right mentality. There, right there. If you if you Squatting said to stuff me. stuff does not make sense to me. And I mean, it's one thing if you're like, there are reasons why there are laws like this that exist. And I get that. And there are people that can't make it. I get that, too. But he's 30. He's obviously had a job before. Like, it's hard for me to understand why. Though I will tell you, through connections, I got a chance to observe someone who was actually in their mid to late 40s that refused to move out. And I watched them get, like, and this was a family thing. Yeah, where, like, they had to get all these notices. And eventually, like, the sheriff had to come out. And they had to have all their stuff out. And it was like, if you're not out by this date, we put all your stuff out on the street corner. And it's like, whatever happens, happens. See, if that was going on with me, I'd be like, you know what? I don't think they want me here. So I think I'm going to go somewhere else. You don't want me here? I don't even want to be here. Fine. Like, I would have yelled that at my parents a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, Not really, but if I was in this situation. Be honest, Nikki. Did you yell that at your parents? I did not. You didn't? No, I moved out when I was like, what, 18, 19? You don't want me. I don't want you. It was fine. But again, it depends on your relationship. I feel like there's other problems. I love this guy so much. With this guy and his parents. I love the idea of your parents being like, you have to leave. And he's like, "Eh, I don't think so. I don't think I do. And then notice after notice after notice. He's living like, in I his... don't think they're eating dinner together. Do you? I love like he's living up in this bedroom and they keep putting notices and he's like, I didn't see a notice. What notice? Did you put oh, one up there? He, I haven't left my room, so I wasn't able to get the I'm notice. not ready to move out now. I'm working on this lawsuit. <laughs> it's going to pay off big. The riot. Apparently some of the less athletic types go nuts for this stuff. Radio U. Nikki, I need you to see something. What is it? You ready? Yeah. Your gut. Oh, you ripped your shirt. I've done that so many times. <laughs> but the thing it's, is, like, I didn't rip it. It's ripping on the seam. Yeah, it's under your arms. So, You're just I mean, too I strong just, for it. it. I wish that was it. I wish that my arms are getting so big that hey, it's I feel ripping like out of the shirt. fabric is getting cheaper for shirts, and they just, they just can't last. Well, here's the thing that's interesting. It was... Six months, eight months ago, I did a round of shirt t-shirt ordering. Yeah. And so I bought shirts from, uh, where's our place, Designed by Humans. And you got T-Fury. T- Fury. And I told everybody that the T-Fury shirts, I wasn't happy with them because they're just not very comfortable. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people balked at that. They were just like, oh my gosh, you're ridiculous, whatever. But I love my Design by Humans shirts. So here's what I am finding. This last batch, here we are eight months later. This last batch of Designed by Human shirts really aren't holding up very well. The quality has changed over the years. They just are not holding up very well. And I don't know if uh, they used to print them like right then and there when you ordered it. And it used to be a more involved process and I felt like the quality was better. Now they're just printed and I think they're printed cheaper in bulk. And that's why. Something like that. Like they just, the shirts aren't as good. 
My T Fury shirts, on the other hand, though they remain not as comfortable, they have been washed I don't know how many times, et cetera, et cetera. They are the same size and fit as they were when I bought them. Like, Basically, you need an uncomfortable shirt. <laughs> they Well, it's just one of those things where, one, I've gotten used to how they feel. Sure. Because the design by humans are a softer fabric, and I do like the way they feel a little bit better. But I have to give credit where it's due. Eight months later, those T-Fury shirts are still awesome, and these Design by Human shirts are struggling through each and every wash. And now I've got this one that's ripping. Oh, you got a rip under the arm. What is happening? On mine, I get I must tug on my shirt a lot because I'll get these holes on the side oh, where really? my nails, like if I just oh, pull sure. my shirt down, sure. I think my nails scrape the fabric. And so I'll get these little tiny holes in the side. And it's like, well, there you go. Man. And we don't know enough to sew. <laughs> Even though I bet I could probably I mean, this is on a seam. Like, I could sew this if I wanted to. I don't know. I don't yeah, even that's like, the point. I don't even like the shirt that much and it's funny of all the shirts i bought i've worn this one the least yeah and it just does just it like, what are you what are you doing and that one is a, a th- it's a vol- it's a voltron shirt voltron defender of the universe voltron defender <laughs> of the universe you have like a little that robot might be the, what that might be the worst <laughs> no it was clever it's cute what that's no, what they say at the it? end of the yeah because, I mean, there's... I just didn't think you'd do the voice There's Legendary voice. Defender on Netflix, uh, yeah, like the yeah. old school one is, this is Defender it. of the Universe. Okay. You know, you've gotten harsher. <laughs> or have you gotten stronger? What do you mean? You're just doing more. <laughs> that might be. I... <laughs> Stop it. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop hitting your head when you're talking. Stop I need to it. emphasize my point. I hear what you're doing, but Stop I it. give you voices. You make fun. I'm not making fun of the voice. I'm making fun of the show thing. Just it all. Okay. It's a, just to let you know, it's not one thing it's you're not doing. You, it's it's the a total show. package. It's not you. It's, it's the show that package. you're you're talking about. That's fine. Oh, I feel great about we're it. We're going to have a good time tomorrow night. Just like this shirt, the show is wearing thin. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming apart at the, the seams. At the the seams. <laughs> we need to get out the kit and sew okay. it up. I know, I know. You hate the riot. Why are they on the radio? Stupid. Yeah. Honestly, we can't trust them with anything else. It's the riot on Radio U. So, something that I struggle with every single week is Sunday night. I can't. I have such a hard time sleeping on Sunday night. Well, I mean, that's the end of the weekend, and I think our bodies know what's going to happen. It's, <laughs> it's like it's all, the party's over. Something like that. So in, in turn, it retaliates, and it doesn't let you rest. Even if, like, let's say that over the course of the weekend, I don't let myself go hog wild. Yeah. Uh, so, like, if I still go to bed sometime between 10 and midnight, and I'm up between 6 and 7, which is pretty typical for the weekend, uh, I still, on Sunday nights, I'm just like, now I'm ready to party. Now I'm ready. I'm ready to stay up. I'm ready to live life. So I end up laying in bed staring at the ceiling. Well, they also say, too, like if you're going out of town or something, it takes you one or two days for your body to change, and then you're ready. So by Tuesday, I'm just like, Oh, you're zonked. out. Yeah, I am. And so Nikki and I found this, and I love this. I've tried a lot of different stuff. I've tried z which, by the way, has just been a drill. The people that make NyQuil have liquid Benadryl that they sell you, and that's to help you sleep. You remember the stories of like, hey, the airline uh, worker gave the kid Benadryl, like slipped it in the drink. Yeah. Uh, And it's like, well, why? Because that makes you sleepy. So this is like a grown-up version of that. So I've tried that, and it, I mean, let's be clear, it works, and the sleep is glorious. But is it hard to get out of it? Try impossible. Like, I could take that stuff at 6 o'clock at night. Go to like kind of stay up through being sleepy till like nine or ten, and or even go to bed at eight and sleep from like eight to five. You know, get nine hours of sleep and get up at five, and you're just like, oh, I could use more sleep. <laughs> it's like I can't function. It'll be after lunch the next day Until. before it really clears my system. It just takes forever. I've tried melatonin, both in like the little tablets, and I've tried the time release tablets. Not good, guys. Because one of two things, either one, I have nightmares, or two... Which usually comes after a couple of days. The uh, the time release ones, 
man, I just feel like I'm. it's releasing hours, days later. I'm just like, the melatonin is still coming. What am I supposed to do? So a lot of the traditional methods are not working. Right. But then Nikki and I found this article that it looks like an article. It's not. It's, it's an, an ad. ad. I mean, it is written up like an article. It's they, like an art ad. It's it's like a, it looks like a magazine article or it, a blog post. And it's not. It is straight up. It is an ad for z now has a, like, it's a melatonin tablet with chamomile in, and lavender. In what and form? It's a gummy. It's a gummy. Hey, gummy if guys, vitamins. If you guys were not with us yesterday, <laughs> Nikki potentially has a gummy problem. No, I just said one time. I know. Everything Ish. starts as just one time. Just one time? Yeah, it all starts that well, way. Well, I was up late, and I was very hungry, and I and I woke up after falling asleep for a little, and I realized, okay, I had gummy vitamins, and I just had a, a few as like a snack, because then it makes your body feel like you did eat something. With these, what if you accidentally did that? You'd be sleeping for days. I couldn't leave this by your bedside. No, I wouldn't even think about it. I'd be like, oh, look, a gummy. I'd be like, Eric, I need you to go in there and take those <laughs> and lock them in the cabinet. Yeah, you, if I didn't come for work the next day, you would never be able to get a hold of me. Like, I won't wake up. You're just like, what happened? I thought I was eating my vitamins, but I kept drink, or eating these chewables with melatonin and I can't wake up. Sounds great, actually. Now for this, they say 30 minutes before... You go to bed. You just chew one of these. Mm-hmm. Is that what it says in this article ad? I think in the ad it is does. ad article. I still think deep down we just yes we need to put our phones down and have a little bit of relaxation well, I do time. All that. I do all you that. do? On Sunday nights, I do. A like, bath or maybe some warm milk? They always say that. I haven't that. done the bath, um, but yeah, like I mean, I try everything. And even like on Sunday afternoons, I'll be like, man, I'm sleepy. I could take a nap. And it's like, No. <laughs> We must stay up. <laughs> we have to wait. <laughs> and I'm just like, something about Sunday nights, man. I just well, cannot. Uh, sleep aids are becoming extremely popular since, you know, obviously a lot of people nowadays mm-hmm. have sleep problems. So, so can Sony... Is there now just... it's in gummy form. Yeah, gummy. Do you think it, it looks like it should taste like grape? I hope it's grape. It's purple. Actually, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I'll have one of those. <laughs> and I don't like gummy bears, so I don't know why. Really? I'm fine with these. What about these. Sour Patch Kids? Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Everything else, so good. Even though the whole time I'm like, dentist, dentist, don't, don't just swallow it. Don't chew it. Well, you chew it and then you just need to remember to brush your teeth at bed. I don't think brushing is enough when it comes to those. Just I'll brushes usually get the, it down into your yeah, tooth. Yeah, I'll get the extreme sour ones and they just, every time you chew it, you're like, there you go. There's a cavity. There's another tooth. <laughs> That's another tooth. <laughs> now they have dental insurance. It's fine. <laughs> but for a while there, it's like, don't eat it. Don't chew them. <laughs> oh, this is for Nikki's teeth. Gone. No. It's red. Oh, no, no, no. It's fine. No, they're just, they're waiting to see. You're hang, hanging out. <laughs> yeah, they're waiting. <laughs> maybe. Thanks for listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Oh no, I missed it. Do it again. You can hear us live every day on the Radio U Network through the Radio U app or at riot.radiou.com. Man, you smell like childhood and happiness. 